Some 200 years ago in England, there lived a young man named Charles Darwin. He was a nature and animal lover who, from a very young age, enjoyed spending hour after hour in the garden discovering different species of animals and insects. Darwin grew up, and it was time for him to go off to university. He wasn't very sure what he wanted to study or what he wanted to be when he was older. That is, until he met a botany professor, who shared with Darwin his knowledge and love for plants and other living creatures. That professor instilled in him a tremendous interest for every species on Earth. Aha! Darwin soon showed great passion for his studies. He spent entire days observing plants and animals and became one of the best students in class. He had a special talent for making new discoveries. One day, his professor offered him the opportunity to set off on a scientific expedition. He would sail around the world, studying the world's different plants and animals, perhaps even discovering new species. This challenge would help him to someday become an important biologist. Darwin thought the idea was wonderful, but his father didn't agree and told him he wasn't allowed to take the trip. When Darwin's father saw his enthusiasm for the project, though, he had no choice but to let him go. He understood that this adventure was Charles's dream and realized that as a father, he should support his son. <laughs> The great day arrived, and together with Captain Fitzroy, Darwin boarded the HMS Beagle to set sail from the coast of England at Christmas 1831. This voyage would change Darwin's future and all of humanity, or rather, the way all people on Earth understood life. <laughs> The voyage was rough from the very start. They were constantly seasick and sailed the ocean with no luck locating any animal species. But when he was bored, Darwin would think about all the opportunities awaiting him. This was how he regained strength and enthusiasm in order to stay alert and on his feet. Oh. <sighs> The expedition's first stops were on the Azores Islands and Cabo Verde. Darwin quickly disembarked to study all the animals and plants he could find. He soon realized that animal species varied from one place to another on the planet. In fact, they were quite different. Can you spot five differences between the two birds? Touch the screen for the answers. The expedition set off again for the coast of Brazil, where he found fossilized bodies of animals that had lived thousands and thousands of years ago even millions of years ago, trapped in the rocks. Those animals, although similar, were not the same as the animals living now. They were like cousins from another time.
His research showed that over time, animals had evolved. They had become stronger and adapted to their environments. This was how different species could continue to exist on the Earth. But how could that possibly happen? Darwin kept on with his studies. Ooh. For nearly five years, he studied various islands, beaches, and jungles where he discovered and gathered different samples of new species so he would be able to study their behavior and habits. Darwin collected so many research samples that his assortment barely fit onto the ship. He traveled all around South America, the Galapagos Islands, Australia, and the islands of the Indian Ocean in Africa. In each place, he discovered varying flora and fauna. Some species reminded him of animals he had found earlier, but with unique characteristics. On the Galapagos Islands, in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, he made the most interesting discoveries. He observed that tortoises had different shells depending on which islands they inhabited. This led him to believe they may have had a common ancestor, a distant relative. Hmm. He discovered there were birds that were very similar to one another, but whose beaks varied with their diet. If they ate fruit, their beaks were curved. If their diet was seed-based, their beaks were designed for cracking. And if they ate insects, they had small beaks to catch them more easily. Darwin wondered, what if birds also had a common ancestor and their beaks have changed over time to adapt to the place they live? This question led him to create a new theory, one he would eventually call natural selection. Aha! According to his theory of natural selection, the organisms that were best adapted to a place had the greatest chance to survive and therefore reproduce. The most well-adapted creatures would produce more descendants and take over the species' habitat. The weakest would disappear. But does this happen only in certain places or all over the planet, he wondered. Oh! Upon returning to England, he carefully studied the animals, plants, and fossils he had collected on his voyages. He wanted to find out if the selection process that seemed to take place in the birds and tortoises of the Galapagos Islands also occurred in other animals. If so, he just might have discovered something quite amazing. He found that changes took place in all animals and put together a long list. Animals and plants undergo tiny changes as years go by. Whichever one benefits from the changes wins out over the rest. If the changes occur over many years, today's animal does not resemble the early one. He determined that millions of years ago, some fish had undergone advancements allowing them to live on land. 
they became amphibians like toads and frogs. They then underwent transformations that turned them into reptiles. Eventually, reptiles evolved into dinosaurs. Darwin unearthed even more interesting information about reptiles and their evolution. Some became the first dinosaurs and others the first mammals. When the dinosaurs disappeared, those early mammals evolved and led to the ones we know today. Mammals continued adapting. The prehistoric panther evolved into lions, tigers, leopards, and cats. Sheep, cows, bulls, and zebu cattle originated from the aurochs. And apes evolved into gorillas, chimpanzees, bonobos, and even human beings. Darwin was enthralled by these important discoveries and developed a theory he called the theory of evolution. His colleagues were amazed. It was the beginning of a new era in the study of the species allowing scientists to make a family tree in an attempt to trace back to the origin of species. Ooh. In the end, Darwin concluded that tiny changes over millions of years had created a wide variety of very different species. He shared his knowledge with the world in The Origin of the Species, a book which won him magnificent awards, and he became one of the most distinguished and greatly admired scientists of all times.